Is it safe to have Thanksgiving dinner with family? And what's the timeline for a COVID vaccine? Hey guys, it's Lorenzo, and this week we are answering your coronavirus questions. First, let's talk turkey. With the holidays coming up, many of us are missing family and friends and would love to get together, but is it safe to have a holiday gathering? Well, if your Thanksgiving looks like a bunch of people crowded around a table inside, then no, you shouldn't have your regular festivities. Our source is the CDC, which sets coronavirus guidance for the country, but it's also important to check with your state and local officials officials because restrictions and guidelines vary nationwide. Also, Dr. Henry Walk, COVID-19 incident manager for the CDC, said the CDC is recommending against travel during the Thanksgiving Day period. Transmission is possible at any type of party, but here are some ways to reduce the risk. Just a warning, it's not going to be easy. First of all, any gathering should be small and ideally outside. For anything indoors, windows have to stay open, and those of you hosting should frequently disinfect high-touch surfaces. Everyone should wear a mask and stay six feet away from anyone who's not part of their household. So, yes, this means relatives who don't live in your home. Bring your own food and dishware and don't share any utensils. And of course, wash your hands often. Again, your state or town may have even stricter guidelines, so check those before planning anything. So it's pretty clear that there are a lot of things to keep in mind for a group gathering and the risk of spreading COVID is always there. So your best bet is to keep things virtual. I know, I know video chatting is getting old, but when it comes to the health and safety of your loved ones, it's better to be safe than sorry. And hey, Zoom is lifting its 40 minute time limit for free accounts on Thanksgiving day. So more time for that virtual family bingo. Okay, next up, let's take a look at some new information on masks. So we've known for a while that they're meant to protect others from COVID, but can masks protect the person wearing it from getting COVID too? A new study from the CDC found that yes, masks do offer some protection for the person wearing it. The study published on November 10th found, quote, masks also help reduce inhalation of droplets by the wearer. There's been a lot of changes to mask guidance like this over the course of the pandemic, but why? The reason is simple. Scientists and officials are still trying to understand this virus. As they learn more, the guidance on things like masks will change, and that's okay. The important thing is to adapt to those changes and follow the latest guidelines to help keep yourself and your community safe. Okay, finally, let's get to the vaccines that are in the works right now. Could a vaccine be ready in a matter of weeks? Let's break down what we know. Right now, there are two vaccines with promising clinical trial results. One is produced by pharmaceutical company Pfizer and the other by a company called Moderna. So both of these companies have done tests with human volunteers to evaluate the safety of the vaccines, but ultimately the FDA needs to give the official okay for the drugs to go out to the public. That's called an emergency youth authorization or EUA. We consulted Pfizer and Moderna to see where they are in the process. Pfizer has completed testing and is ready for the FDA to review its vaccine for EUA. Moderna is at a similar place in the process. The company said on November 16th that it will apply for FDA authorization, quote, in the coming weeks. So how long will it take to get authorization from the FDA? The FDA says it's prepared to issue EUAs within hours or days, but that generally the timelines for FDA review and action on a request to issue an EUA will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. We don't know the exact timeline for authorization, but experts generally agree that it will be months until the vaccine is widely available. See, the first batches won't just go to anyone. Healthcare workers and vulnerable populations will get first dibs. We're really looking at next spring when they start to roll out in, in a more widespread fashion and really next summer or third quarter when we start to have kind of global availability of these vaccines. At this point, it's too soon to nail down an exact timeline, but it seems likely most people will be waiting months as opposed to weeks for their vaccination. All right, that covers it for this week. Thank you for watching Verify. You can send us questions by texting 703-873-6603.